Here we can have a look at Strava. And Strava is pretty much the most popular GPS tracking app for performance out there. We can have a look at some features that you may not know are present behind the scenes. Uh, let's start by going into one of my rides. If you go into training, my activities, you'll bring up a log of all previous rides. And the clever thing here is that you can search by keywords. So a tip here is to actually title your Strava activities based on meaningful keywords, either location, performance, or some other variable that you can find later. If all else fails, obviously you can search by date, time, distance, or my particular favorite, searching by suffer score. And basically that is a how hard the ride was for you. Let's look at this ride that I did earlier today. Let's click it. It opens up the Strava panel. Now, some of you will say, hey, why doesn't my screen look the same in Strava? Well, basic Strava gives you just this little bit of information here. The Strava Premium adds in power curve, heart rate zone, and watt distribution. But there's a brilliant add-in for Chrome, which is called Stravistix. Uh, it's only available for Chrome. It's made by Thomas Champagne, and um, it's free currently. So I urge you to add in this to Chrome and open Chrome to analyze Strava in the future. So many of you will be familiar with the basic panel. You've got your GPS track of the ride. You've got your elevation. You've got your segment efforts. Um, the first thing to perhaps look at, which people may not be familiar with, is best splits. If you click on best splits, you get a view which you can customize your best um, performance for 1, 10, 20, 30 minutes, and you can add a split. For example, I'm curious what my best split is for five minutes or six minutes, let's say. Let's type in six minutes, add new split. So at six minutes, um, my average best speed was 38 kph, the average heart rate over this 155 and variability between minus 25 BPM and 85 above the, um, above the initial heart rate, I believe. And the power for that six minute split was 245 elevation gain. It also tells you where that six minutes was on the course if you click on it. Um, that best six minutes was on that d slight incline, slight decline section of the course. You can put uh, best split in terms of minutes or best split in terms of distance in kilometers or miles. Let's return to segment efforts. And as you'll know, the segment efforts are those ranked compared to yourself and other people. With Stravistics, there's this great feature where your ranking compared to yourself this year is shown in red for being down on that segment and green being up. So for example, on the first two laps out of three, two, two out of three laps took 26 minutes, 43 seconds. I beat this year's PB by 44 seconds and I bought, beat my all-time PB by 11 seconds, but I was down on the KOM time by one minute, and that gives me a ranking of four out of 17 on that uh, particular effort. Now, let's say you want to create a segment for the entire ride, but missing off the warm-up and warm-down, which you may have, which may be influencing these stats up here. It's very easy, just go into Toolbox, Actions, Create Segment, allow the segment to load, zoom in to your start point then just move forward to where the ride started move to the end and go backwards taking off the cool down and then create a new segment create new segment ignoring these possible duplicates click next and uh, I'd advise you initially to give it a familiar name but keep it private as unless you check the duplicates carefully it's likely that somebody has put on something very similar before but for your own personal use you can say uh, main ride full gas and create a personal private segment and then you can analyze your core ride data missing off your cool down time okay let's cancel that and go back to the beginning So stats from the ride are that it's 24 kilometers or five miles, 41 minutes, which gives an average speed of 35 kph. The maximum during the ride was 50.8. 
the average heart rate was 1.7, maximum 162, cadence 72, power 232, calories 638, temperature 17, uh, total time as mentioned 41. So relatively modest amount of information from Core Strava. Um, you can get a lot more by adding in the premium option, which is by subscription. So if we go to premium, we can look at the watt distribution, i.e. the power produced, assuming you were using a power meter, of course. Um, Strava needs to have the incoming data for heart rate and power for it to analyze it. So you can't just subscribe to premium and magically receive heart rate and power without actually rec recording it. So the watt distribution gives you these 25 watt segments. You can see that um, actually 31% of my time was spent riding 225 to 249 watts and 19% 250 or above. Now you can alter your zones um, in zone distribution. So in zone distribution based on power, if you put in your FTP, I've entered my FTP here as 251, then it's telling me based on a simple calculation, uh, 60%, 70%, 80%, 90%, 90%, going up through the zones, that um, if you're riding a threshold, for example, 226 to 263 watts, I sustain for 42% of the ride. But riding at um, VO2 max, which would be above my FTP by at least uh, 10%, I was managed to sustain that for only 6 minutes or 15%. Although in my in my armament of excuses, I was using B Pro power meter here, which, as you'll see from other videos we've made, does tend to underreport. So I'd have to really put a custom FTP for that power meter rather than the power tap, which I've used for this FTP. Okay, let's go to Power Curve. Power Curve is one of the most used power analysis tools. In purple here, you have the power curve for this particular ride. And in light purple and shaded, you have the all-time power curve for any ride done by yourself while Strava was monitoring it. So you can see that this ride was relatively modest effort, or let's put it this way, it was a tempo effort in those early phases of the ride. And the clever thing again about this power curve is it maps where the effort occurred. So you can see if I say where was the best one minute effort, it's actually occurring in that uh, home straight, or where was the best five minute effort? It was on that initial vertical ramp on lap one, actually. Um, lap one uphill was the best five minute effort. And best 10 minute effort, best 20 minute effort, best 20 minute effort was the first half of the race. So it's potentially very powerful and you can compare yourself to any time period you like using custom date range and you can also change that to watts per kilogram if you prefer that metric. So let's go into heart rate now. Heart rate analysis is also based on custom zones which you can customize here. Customize zones um, you enter in uh, this, this panel. So heart rate analysis assuming you've put in the customized zones but even if you don't it will make a best guess is based on maximum heart rate. So maximum heart rate here is using uh, the percentage model to work out zone 1 to 5. I believe that is um, 60, 70, 80, 90 and 100 percent heart rate maximum. So under 100 beats per minute hardly spent any time in this event under 100 beats per minute and at threshold based on heart rate 149 to 163 approximately 50 percent of the time but a really good take-home metric here is the suffer score which is essentially how difficult was the race and personally i prefer points in the red as this in my experience maps on to rider perceived effort rpe a little bit more accurately so i use points in the red as a quick glance take home for how hard was that ride. Let's return to analysis now. If you want to go kilometer by kilometer, you can go into analysis here and you can see exactly what you're doing at a particular time, speed, power, heart rate, cadence, and outside temperature. 
don't ignore outside temperature because the outside temperature does affect the air pressure. Essentially, the hotter it is, the easier it is to go fast because the air density is lower. That might explain some of your personal bests, perhaps, in the past, and why it's so hard to set a Strava KOM when it's extremely cold outside or, or raining. So when we uh, look at the analysis, we can also have a glance at pacing. You don't want to reach your maximum heart rate too early. You want to reach about um, a threshold, uh, let's say maximum heart rate minus 10%, around about halfway through the race, and then be hitting maximum for the last, let's say, 20% of the ride. And cadence as well, you don't want to let your cadence drop to zero if you're really trying to turn in a good performance, except where you've got no choice, for example, avoiding traffic or turning corners as per here on the rides, where the cadence drops to zero. It's purely to turn a tight corner. Okay, that, that's the Strava Pro features, or premium as it's now called. But Stravistix is a fantastic add-in, which gives you these headlines here. Move ratio is how much time you spend moving during the ride, so moving versus resting on the ride. In this tempo ride, it was 100% moving. It gives you your quartile speed, so 75% um, upper quartile is effectively what you were doing for your best 25% of the of the time. So the best 25% was at 40.3 kilometers an hour. Training impulse score is Stravistic's own metric of suffering, um, which it also gives you uh, an analysis of what it would be if you if you rode on for an hour. It also tends to favor heart rate reserve, i.e maximum heart rate minus resting heart rate to show that 82% of the time, 82% 82, 82 heart rate reserve maximum on average. Amount of time climbing, we'll have to anal analyze that in a little bit more detail in a second. And pedaling time, almost 100%. And we can actually extend all of these statistics with this breakout panel. It tells you about the course here, it tells you about the course grade, which it grades as flat on this occasion. And that's because on the course it was 75% flat, about 13% climbing and 12% downhill. In fact, it's a loop, so it should be exactly 12.5% um, up and downhill. But the key thing is to, for a rider is to try and minimize their time spent laboriously climbing uphill at slow speed. So typically a rule of thumb is you increase your FTP threshold watts by around about 10 to 20 percent depending on the duration of the climb if it's a short climb it could be more but let's say 20 percent for a relatively brief climb so if your threshold ftp is 200 watts increase it to 240 when going uphill and conversely to recover you can reduce it to 160 when going downhill and overall that makes the overall ride time quicker because it's less time spent stuck going up hills at very slow speed what we can also look at is elevation. Um, that's partly influential on looking at climbing performance. And climbing performance often is tracked by vertical meters per hour, which is also done here in a number of different zones. But as this is a fairly flat course, that data is pretty meaningless on this occasion. Heart rate analysis, as mentioned, is somewhat biased towards heart rate reserve in Stravistics. I actually like that metric. You can enter your own custom zones in Stravistics as well. So my all-time max heart rate is essentially around 172, which is fairly low, but my resting heart rate is very low right now, around 28, um, taken first thing in the morning just after getting up. And FTP, at least based on power tap, is around well, it was around 2.51 at the time I entered this data. So looking at the heart rate zones, you can see that um, around about 67% of the time, or 27 minutes, was spent in zone 5, which is a fairly decent effort, which is actually 80 to 90% of heart rate reserve. And the average use of heart rate reserve was 82% through the whole ride anyway. 
can analyze speed in these 12 custom uh, zones. And you can see, for example, that almost no time was spent under uh, 17 kph. That would be on hills, of course. Yet 7% um, of the time was spent above 45 kph, just here. And power, you're nearly always going to return to power, of course. Across these uh, 14, 14 zones of power, you can see here that um, we pretty much didn't get above 400 watts. But um, by the same token, I didn't really fall below, well, 200 watts. Only 10% of the time was spent under 200 watts. The weighted power, i.e. the power that you would have sustained if it was a very smooth ride, with no hills really, was 240 watts. And the variability index is, shows you the difference between the weighted power and your mean power. So effectively, how good was your pacing through the race? And this was very, very close to one on in this example. And your punch factor is essentially um, how much did you punch above your weight, above your uh, FTP and I'm actually underperforming here due to differences in the power meter but nevertheless I get to 95% of what I should have been doing in terms of pure FTP. There's the um, mean value and there's the upper 75th percentile value for power which you can already break down in a little bit more detail. Cadence again in a lot of detail 73 RPM very narrow variability really very <laughs> interesting to see that in that 40 minute ride there were nearly 3000 crank revolutions uh, quite astonishing really and grade i've already talked about elevation so stravistics is really an amazing add-in seeing as it's currently free gives you a lot of options to analyze your race in more detail the Strava Premium, Premium does a good job, particularly regarding power curve and heart rate, and I think it's all worth that subscription price alone. Although some other software might be worth mentioning, like Golden Cheetah and uh, Power Agent, if you have that free with Power Tap, for example, it does do power curve analysis for free, but it means exporting new data each time. Okay, that's all. I hope that was useful.